This is the cleric. Uh, the cleric is um, Argos. His name is Argos. Argos the cleric. Okay, here we go. With two cubes, here's how the cleric's gonna work. One is starting on near, and one is starting on this blank space down here. You have two separate tracks that you're working, and they work two different ways. The top track, which is near, any, and all, uh, represents the cleric's space in the game. So these are the other characters. Let's just say those are the other characters. These two are considered near the cleric. These are all any. All any is a hard way to say it. These two are near the cleric. Any means any of the characters, including this one, which is not near the cleric. And then all would mean everybody else other than the cleric. So you're going to use them because the cleric has some powers that help and assist others. So this cube, the way you would work, the way you would move it is it moves up one space at a time. So if I choose to move on his turn, you can move one cube, one uh, anywhere in its, in its allowable movements. So this cube can move up one uh, to any. Um, on another turn, I can move it up to all. But it, it would take you two turns to get up to the all. Uh, once I use the all or the any, when I'm helping other people other than my two neighbors, one of my two neighbors, then I do cube removal, which is remove the cube from the card. On the next turn, it comes back and it starts here again. So I can move up to any, let it sit there. I can use any of these abilities. And then eventually, if I want to use one on my neighbors and I use it on any, I remove the cube. If I move it up to all and I eventually use something that helps others, I'm going to remove the cube. I don't have to use the all if I'm on it. It's just this allows me to use that. Okay, so going down to the bottom. This cube here can move in the row that it's in any number of spaces. So let's say I move to heal. I'm on heal all. I can heal all and remove my cube. Or I can just heal myself because a heal allows you to heal yourself normally. And I'm not healing everyone else, so that would still sit there. So let's say I heal myself. Oh, I don't have my healing cube. So I move my healing cube, my, my, my health cube up one. On my next turn, in this space, I have the option to move up one or to move again in my row. So let's say I move up one. It's a heal again. Now I can heal all if I'd like. Remove the cube. Next turn is going to come in. Next turn, if I move this up, I'm boosting my range to any, but I haven't moved this cube onto a space that allows me to do anything. So nothing would activate. Some, cube, some spaces are what they call passive, so they would continue to activate uh, while this is going on. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But if I decide to move this cube now, I have the choice of moving it to the left or to the right, anywhere I'd like. And let's say I move it all the way down here to this attack, which is a two uh, melee. Uh, I haven't done anything with this, so it can still stay there. On my next turn, I have the option to slide this up. And if I slide it up, I'm going to use that attack. That attack is a three melee, a huge attack, but it has a cube removal. This is going to come off. Meanwhile, I've still been boosting my any, and it can sit there. So I come back my next turn, come here. Let's say I push it up to all. End of turn. I didn't do anything. I haven't moved on to an action. I chose to boost my range instead of anything else. And then the next turn, I move to heal. That's going to heal everybody else and remove the cube. I can choose not to do that. I can choose just to heal myself if I'd like to. But I have this really awesome heal all, which is great. So I can move up. I can move anywhere within that row. I can move up. So basically the whole idea of the cleric is you can move anywhere in a row. If you land on one with an arrow, you can move up. You're going to do that again. So he does things twice in a row when he moves up, which is uh, sort of his, his thing. It's order and formation and structure. You can move anywhere in this row. If I go to one with a arrow, I would move up for my next turn. I could, I could choose not to move up. I could still go within that row. So he's not completely limited. If I'm on here, I don't have to move up next turn. I can stay here. But if you move up, you do unlock another 
another row of abilities and they generally get better as you go up. Um, I could sit up here, do these actions, eventually, bam, attack, I'm gonna cube removal and go back down here. That's how it works. So I'll go through the, the abilities real quick and tell you what they are. So the heal is just one heart to yourself. If you have, if you're using his um, any and all in near, you can give it to somebody else or everybody else. Uh, gain one food, a melee attack of one, which means you have to be adjacent to the monster. Let's say the monster's here, the cleric needs to be here. I don't have another color cube on me, but let's say the monster's here. It's an adjacent attack. Um, it's an attack of, of one damage. You roll a die, a six-sided die, and if you roll higher than the monster... Where's my monster? Um, anyway, if you roll higher than the monster... Oh, here they are. They're in a separate thing. Uh, if you roll higher than the monster, or equal to or higher than the monster's shield number, then you would have a successful attack. So this monster has a shield of five. It's very tough. Um, the hand is Bless, which allows a reroll to another character. So let's say I'm on the Bless, and I'm on Near. It allows uh, the character to the left or right of me to gain a reroll. It's passive, so I can use this uh, turn after turn if I want to sit there and do nothing else. Um, I can boost this up, give it to anybody. That would be my turn. This would come off, next turn it would come here. I could boost it up next turn, give it to anybody. So the cleric can technically give anybody rerolls turn after turn because it's a passive effect. It doesn't, it doesn't happen upon moving to it. Uh, instant uh, effects happen upon moving to it. But um, a passive effect can happen while it sits there. Uh, you have to move a cube on your turn, so the cleric can move these ones up and down every turn and use them or not use them, but you have to make a movement. Um, you would move them up, and then you can take the, take the bless action. Uh, this heals again. The rest action uh, removes a, static, a, a status effect from yourself. Uh, normally it's from yourself, but the cleric is able to do it to anybody. So the cleric can remove one from the people next to him, anyone or all. This is another passive effect, so the cleric can uh, uh, sit there and, is it passive? Sorry, it's instant. Um, that's not a passive effect. Uh, and then if I go up to the top row, I have Rally, which allows another character take, to take another action. This is passive as well, so I can sit here and move this up and let other characters take another action. I'm not really taking an action. I'm like, I sort of am prepping myself to take other actions, but I'm not technically taking another action. Um, uh, but I would still have to make a movement and I can allow other people to take other actions. Uh, and then he's got the, the crossbow, which is a melee attack of one, which means if I'm in the same row as a monster anywhere, uh, it's considered within my range, I roll to see if I succeed. The one means the monster takes one damage. This one over here, which is the sword three, um, I have to be adjacent, but if successful, they're taking three damage, which is huge. And that's pretty much how the cleric works.